Hey everyone, it's Oli Lindley here from One Number, and today we're going to take a look at dual axis charts. Dual axis charts are amazing. They're a chart type that combines multiple measures into a single view to help you tell a story about how those two measures interact with one another. They're also a chart type that many members of the Tableau community have used to work around some of the limitations of Tableau and create these super interesting, wild, wacky views uh, that, that are really, really awesome and informative. For instance, you can build donut charts, but you've got to use a dual axis chart to do that. If you're interested in that, why not check out this video? We'll pop it in the description or it'll come up now on a link. Uh, but today we're just going to focus in on building some basic dual axis charts. How do you know when you found one? When should you use them? How do you format one? Well, those are some of the questions that we're going to tackle today. And the chart that we're going to look at and build is this one. What's the relationship between the health expenditure per capita and the infant mortality rate? in South Africa. Now you can fire up this workbook. The link to the workbook is in the description. If you want to build along and you want to have this as a reference, that's awesome. You can also just follow us on the World Indicators data set on Tableau uh, if you want to. It is uh, one of the safe data sources. So, okay, so let's see how we build this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is drag this year field on. I'm going to hold down options and drag because I'm on a Mac, but if you're on a Windows, you can right click and drag. So I'm going to say, uh, okay, why, <laughs> why would you hold down options? Why would you right click and drag? It just automatically generates this menu uh, before you drop the pill in. It just means you don't have to drop the pill. It selects the blue discrete year. And then I click on it again, then go down to date value year. I just want date value year. So generate the menu straight away. Side note. I'm now going to drag our health expenditure per capita, put that on rows. And I think before we do anything else, let's just filter by country. So I'm going to look for South Africa and pop that in. Okay, that's looking fine. Now, I'm going to take, there are two ways of building a dual axis chart. And I'll show you the first in this view. And then, thank goodness, we've got a second view because I'll show you the second one in that one. So I'm just going to take our second measure, which is the infant mortality rate, and drop it onto rows. Uh, when I do that, Tableau just places one view on top of the other. I need to make it super clear to Tableau, you need to combine these two. So I'm going to hit the drop down on the second pill. Now, there's no option for a dual axis chart on the first pill. So if you do select the first one, you're going to come up short. Why? I think it just makes it super clear when you have loads of measures. For in this case, on the rows shelf, uh, that your dual axis charts are between the current pill and the one to the left, as opposed to, you know, you select this pill and it could be one to the right, could be one to the left. So that's why. And when I select dual axis, there are a couple of key things to note before we dive into this. The first is we've got this little smooshed pill, right? The two, the two measures have been uh, squashed together and we now have a flat edge between the two pills. That's the sign of a dual access chart, which is actually super useful because sometimes you fire open a workbook, you, you don't know if you're looking at a dual access chart or not. And this is just a really helpful little visual cue. So that's something to look out for. The second thing is we do have our two axes. So there's health expenditure per capita. Here's infant mortality rate. And you can see they kind of run uh, to different values, $700, 5.5%. That's cool. We'll take a look at that in some more detail now. And then there's this marks card which interestingly enough actually has three marks cards in one. So here's the card for all, here's for the health expenditure per capita, and here's for the infant mortality rate. And what's so cool about that is it just lets you uh, interact with each chart individually, as opposed to having to make choices that affect both at the same time. Okay, look, technically this is a dual axis chart and and you could present this, I guess. But the truth is, like with many chart types in Tableau, the key is formatting and making this super clear, not only to ourselves to interpret it nicely, but also to our end users, how they should work with this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and implement as much color coordinating into this chart as we can find. Okay, so I'm going to take this blue for the health expenditure per capita and link it up to this axis. So I want to color this axis blue and this one orange. So let's right click on health expenditure per capita. I'm going to format it. 
go to access font let's choose this blue make it bold really stand out and that already looks so nice so i'm just going to do the, sa the same for infant mortality access font orange bold there we go that's looking so good so already i think this is a little bit easier to look at the second thing that I think is helpful with a dual axis chart like this is just to label the line ends. Um, it's not an essential part of this, but I think it's helpful because it really provides that visual cue to say, hey, this is going to be 3.4% and this is $645. It's not, it's not necessary. It's just a nice visual cue. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the sum of health expenditure per capita marks card. I'm going to click on the labels tab. I'm going to click show mark labels, and that's just going to label every single mark that we have. And then I'm going to click on line ends. So we just get the start and the, and the end. And then let's edit this font. So I'm going to select bold and match mark color. If you just match the mark color, you don't have to go and find the exact color, especially if you chose like some, uh, I don't know, custom color and you want to find it again, just match that mark color. Uh, I'm going to just repeat all our steps for the infant mortality. So, okay, there we go. Line ends. That's correct. Let's bold and match the mark color. That's already looking pretty good. And hmm, I like that. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do here is just to sort out this heading. So I'm going to double click on our heading. Uh, let's take that out. I think it's helpful to ask questions in the in the headings of your charts wherever you can. I think it it adds to the engagement from our end users perspective. So we're just going to say what is the relationship between health exp per capita and the infant mortality rate in South Africa? Uh, maybe this country field should be dynamic, right? So I'm just going to insert country or region here and put a question mark so that if we update the filter to something else, then that will update. Uh, hmm, interesting. Let's make that bold. And now let's color these little references that we put in here. So let's make that bold and dark blue for health expenditure per capita. And for the infant mortality rate, that's going to be bold and this beautiful orange. And if we hit OK, what's the relationship between health expenditure per capita and the infant mortality rate in South Africa? And I think that that's a really nice dual access chart. Why? Because it's clear to look at. The colors all work. Um, the Although we've got differing scales on our axes, because we've made it super clear by labeling the line ends, uh, by coloring things well, I think that this chart is pretty easy to follow. And if you ever get to the point of trying to confuse the lines in your head, I think we've added those guide rails in just to pull you back. So that's the first way that you can create a dual axis chart. And this is a dual axis chart with two measures that have different scales. So what about this scenario where we're actually comparing two measures that have the same scale, but we want that in the same view, and we just want to edit the mark type rather than, uh, you know, having the same mark type. Can we do that? Well, with a dual axis chart, we absolutely can. So this is what we're going to try and build. We're going to build a chart that answers the question, how does overall population growth compare to the 0 to 14 population growth in South Korea? And we can see that although hmm, the population is growing over time, actually the 0 to 14 year olds seem to be uh, shrinking. Well, that proportion of the population just seems to be shrinking. So here the axes are actually the same, 50 million and 50 million but it's the mark type that's slightly different. So let's do this and I'll show you how to build that second or the second way to build a dual axis chart. So again, I'm holding down the options key uh, or right click and drag year. We're going to look at the population total, put that on rows. And I think before we really get started, let's just filter to South Korea uh, and pop that in. Okay, South Korea. Um, the second way that you can create a dual axis chart is by taking that second measure and rather than dropping it onto rows, hit the drop down dual axis. You just drag it to the opposite axis 
of your current measure. So here is the population total. So I'm just going to drag it to the opposite side of my view, not the opposite axis, the opposite side of the view to your current measure. You just get a single green bar and that's the sign that you're good to go. So you can just drop that in and now you can see, okay, this has worked. How do we know? Smooshed pills. Smooshed pills on the row shelf, that's a good sign. And we've got our two axes. So there's our population total and our population zero to 14 count. Now, hmm, here's what's interesting. You could leave it like this, right? You could uh, have these two axes unsynchronized, um, ending at different points. But at that point, you'd just be communicating the relationship between the trends in the, in this data rather than actually being able to compare absolute values. So I think something that would be nice would just be to synchronize those axes since we're dealing with the same measure values here, right? We're dealing with the same, like, uh, we're still counting people. So it's 50 million people and 10 million people. Maybe we should just match those up. So I'm gonna right click on, you can actually do this by right clicking on any of the axes and I'm gonna say synchronize axis. All right, so now we can see that line looks far less impressive than it did initially, but uh, this probably is easier to read. What we could do is change, hmm, in our initial view, you'll see that we had, uh, here it is, uh, a bar chart and a line chart kind of overlaid one on top of the other. And that is a really nice feature of a dual axis chart. So we could, we could change that out now. Uh, but let me just pause to say, if you're interested in building charts like this and really scaling up your Tableau knowledge, why not come take a course with us? We've loaded up our calendar with some really cool courses that we're excited about. Everything from Tableau beginner courses to give you the fundamentals of the of the software, all the way through to these like uh, more nuanced niche calculations courses and Tableau prep courses that we think will really serve you well. So if you need some help, scaling up your Tableau experience, come and check that out. We'll pop links uh, up, up in the, I was gonna say upstairs, you know, up in the view now or down in the description. Uh, but let's let's take a look at swapping this mark type now. So all we've got to do is click on the relevant marks card. So for us, it's the sum of population total. And instead of a line, I'm going to select a bar. And that immediately kind of populates like this, which looks cool. Um, our colors are maybe not so nice or user friendly. And this probably brings me up and brings me to the one, not downside, but potential weakness of a dual access chart, which is when our views become busy, they can become difficult to read or become a little bit complicated to fully understand. So we do need to make sure that our formatting is clear, that our colors are clear, that we're not trying to tell too many stories in one chart type, you know, in one chart, one view. So what does that mean for our view right now? Well, I guess the question that we're, that we're asking is going to determine the way that we format this chart. So if we're trying to ask, uh, how has the population grown over time, although uh, the population zero to 14 has declined, well, perhaps the population bars would be the bold part, you know, the very clear part that we want to, that we want to um, draw our end users attention to. Maybe it's the other way around, you know, maybe we're actually saying, hang on, how has the population zero to 14 changed over time in comparison to the overall population? Do you see how those two questions are slightly different? I think we're going to tackle the second. We're going to focus in on this population zero to 14 count and try and answer that. So what I'm going to do is change the color of this population total. Hmm. Let's choose just a light color. Maybe this light blue will be fine. And I'm just going to hit the color tab and just drop this opacity. Just kind of dial it back a little bit, just so that it sits a little further back in the view. Uh, this red is coming forward, which is great. Let's make sure it's that it is a bright red. It doesn't seem like it, but apparently it is. So we could also label some of these right now, mm, something similar. So let's click some population zero to 14 marks card label. Let's show the mark label. Just the line ends are fine. And let's just get that bold and matching the mark color. Oop, bold. Okay. And that'll work just fine. And then 
here, sum of population is going to be a little bit different, right? If we say show mark labels, you see we don't really have like a line ends. Uh, so it's just labeling each one and it kind of looks a bit messy. So maybe we just say like the minimum and the maximum values or something. Uh, again, we can make that bold and match the mark color. Um, so, oops, work has gone off. Let's pop that on again. So here's what we could do. Um, I think, again, let's label these axes. So we could format this and change that. Let's make it bold. And uh oh, what was the exact color of population total? I think it was like this kind of color. Yeah, I think that's good. And we can do the same here. I guess it is worth saying at this point that um, in this, in these particular instances where you've got the same mark type and the same, I mean, different mark types and the same axis, uh, you could get rid of one of these axes, right? Because is it really demonstrating that much that we have both axes? Perhaps it is, and you'd want to keep it in. You could take that away and we just have population on this side and now we're just comparing both. I think the final thing that we'd need to do here is just edit this heading. So let's bring some of these colors and names in here. Again, we want to ask a question. So we want to say, how has the uh, 0 to 14 population? Maybe we should say, yeah, the population of 0 to 14 year olds changed versus total population. Yeah, that works. Versus, maybe we say the total population. And then again, the country. So in, insert country, so that if you do change it, it'll update. Let's make that bold. Total population is going to be bold. Let's choose our nice blue and zero to 14 year olds. Oh, I think I'm just going to do the whole thing in red rather than work it out. Okay, there we go. That works. So those are dual access charts. We've looked at how to format them well, what they are, uh, how to identify them, the two ways of making them. Um, and hopefully this has been a really helpful video. So if, there's, if there are any other things that you want us to answer on this, feel free to pop a comment down below. Uh, we'll be sure to keep building some of these slightly more advanced dual access charts going forward. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at some of those classes in the future. Keep well.